punch, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoy that. Some of you may be aware, be aware that since 1980, I've performed at every summer fest in Milwaukee on the children's stage. You'll never see that act there. <laughs> Not gonna happen. In keeping with the theme tonight of time travel, let's discuss time travel as it shows up in entertainment. Now in the world of literature, we'd have to start with H.G. Wells, The Time Machine. And then uh, I'm sure some of you have read the Time Traveler's Wife, and perhaps you've read Stephen King's story about the man who travels back in time to try to prevent the Kennedy assassination. And on the big screen, of course, we'd start with the time machine, but then there would be time after time, somewhere in time, and uh, we all enjoy Back to the Future. And when it comes to television, you just need to remember two words. The Twilight Zone. And it's all science fiction, but not so fast, some scientists have been saying lately. They're starting to believe that time travel may not be as impossible as we've been led to believe. Really. For instance, you can all become time travelers tonight. When you leave, just look up in the sky. If you see some starlight up there, remember that that light with those stars years, decades, centuries ago. You are literally looking back into time. And Einstein thought that we could travel forward in time if we just realized that time was like people traveling on a twisty river. And if you just get off the boat at one point and then beat the boat to the next curve, you would have traveled in time. But we're gonna try to time travel tonight. Actually, I'm going to attempt to time travel. And Three of you will help me, but you will not have to come up here. You're going to help me right from where you're sitting. I'm just going to pick three people, and in a few moments, I'm going to ask each of you a question. Relax. Simple question. No one will have any trouble answering it. But you see, I'm going to travel ahead right now. So I'm going to hear your answers before the rest of you have even heard me ask them. Let me use my little time travel machine here. I'm back. <laughs> Did you miss me? Yeah. Two packs of playing cards, red and blue. 52 cards in the deck. No jokers. The only jokers are... We're looking at them. Okay. You're my first helper. You're my second helper. You're number three. Here's your question. Please name a playing card, any one of the 52. Have your own choice. Which one is it? Three cards. See, these cards are still in order. So, well, wait, wait a minute here. I'm, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you change your mind because I need to put these in place and I don't want you to see. <laughs> Not much of a magic act if I. And you over here, okay. There we go. I got the answers. And we don't use the red cards at all anymore. You folks will be working out of the blue pack here. Now these are the ones that are importantly in order. So that when you give me your selection, I can find it. So other than the three of hearts, what will it be? Really? Eight of clubs. Okay. Eight of clubs. And yours, ma'am? Ace of spades. The ever popular ace of spades. King of hearts. Okay, you really could have picked any cards that you wanted, but you picked the Eight of Clubs, you picked the Ace of Spades, you picked the King of Hearts, 
before you announced any of those choices, I traveled in time and took three out of the deck. And I want you to notice which three I took out of the deck. Eight of clubs, ace of spades, king of hearts. Got all three. Whenever you see a magician perform, the magician usually has certain conventions. It seems all magicians. First of all, most magicians, not all, most magicians are male. Most magicians have a magic wand, like this. Magicians frequently work with animals, a fluffy rabbit, a snowy white dove. Magicians use decks of cards. They use coins. They use rope. Many magicians utilize helpers from the audience, like you, sir, if you would stand up and join me here on stage, and you, sir, if you would stand up and join me here on stage. One of you right over here. Other one right over here. Thank you very much. Your first name? Tim. Thank you so much. And you are Tim and Mike. You two do not know each other? Now you do. Okay. <laughs> One more convention, maybe the most important one, when magicians perform, they are frequently helped by beautiful showgirl assistants. Yeah. There's lovely Laura, we'll trust her for a moment with the magic wand. And now... Two lengths of rope. Would you hold those two ends? And would you hold those two ends? Because I know what's going to happen. I'll give you a tip. One end in each hand. Go to the ends of the rope, so gentlemen. Stretch it out. Stretch it out tighter so the wand comes up a little bit. Okay. Another thing that magicians always use are those beautiful, those brilliant silk scarves that come from either China or Japan. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We've got the magic wand, we've got the ropes, and the ladies have two beautiful silk scarves. And we're going to then add the scarves to the ropes. What? No. You mean you, you let me get this far into this and you don't have to? We do something. What?
to three. And when I say three, I'm going to pull the magic wand out, and each of you gentlemen are going to pull your ropes tight, and all of you, and you're just going to watch. <laughs> Underwear. Good night, everybody.